Sounds like they're gonna be at it all night. I'm sure if Bowie has anything to say about it. Now, yeah, before Miss Rebecca came along, I recollect us taking a taste now and again. Of course, it uh, wouldn't be right now. Not for a man about to be remarried, son. No, it wouldn't be right. Got a young son to set an example for, too. No small thing for a man. And a fine son will be, Colonel. Following your sober example. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome, Colonel. Man does what he can. That's all a man can do. Still, they say the wine is fine. And the ladies are ready. How long do you think those ladies are going to wait, Joe? Well, we get finished here like it's not. I'm going to find my way to California. But not tonight. No, sir. California ladies are just going to have to wait. Well, tonight, I'd like to hear what you're going to say to that bunch over there in San Antonio. Me too. You got any ideas? Well, I figure between here and there, you come up with something appropriate. You always have. I wish I had your faith, Joe. You know, Rebecca and I are going to miss you when you do go to California. Well, we'd best be getting you over there, Colonel, while the men are still standing. finding about two quarts of tequila, which I don't care for particularly, but it doesn't get the job done. Where is he? Who, oh, boy? Oh, uh, he's in his quarters. I'd like you to join us if you wouldn't mind. Oh, I just assume leaving them Texas decisions to you Texans. I'll know my duty when I see it. Oh, I forgot you're only a private. Uh, hi, private affairs. If you could just uh, tear yourself away. Oh, all right. Oh, 
salt, some lemon, a little salt. And you sober up just like that? Ah, a little mad. Maybe you did wrestle that grizzly bear after all. No, I never done that. I just tickled him some and he fell off the cliff. Damn the bear I ever seen. should issue a joint order to terminate the festivities. Oh? I believe that Santa Ana's within three days' march of us right now. You do? Well, let me tell you something, Colonel. The Generalissimo himself could siesta in the plaza over here tomorrow. Don't you think you've had enough to drink already? There's 2,000 Mexican regulars camped down the Medina River as we speak. And how much I've had to drink is none of your damn business. Impossible. All my scouting reports are based on Eastern notion. Confirm beyond the shadow of a doubt that it's impossible for Santa Ana's army to move that quickly. Four apples. Moving an army from Pennsylvania to Illinois in the winter might be impossible. But Santa Ana's coming from Mexico. Now, down there, they got mesquite. It dries where it stands, and a whole army can be moved on it. And it has. This isn't Boston, the American Revolution. It's Mexico, Colonel. Mexico. Your man is reliable. Juan Seguin? A Mexican. Trust him with my life. You may have. We all may have. Oh, uh, I was about to say, even in the Congress, a man gets offered a drink now and then. Help yourself. Well, I take it we're agreed then, Colonel Bowie. Are we? I'll be waiting for you in the plaza. You know, I'll tell you something. If I hear one more comment about Mexicans from some damn Easterner. Oh, I believe he's from South Carolina. Is there a difference? Speaking as a Southerner, a lot of difference. You know, the only thing that man and I agree on is that San Antonio is the door to Texas. And we to keep that door closed, give Sam Houston a chance to build an army. Well, you'd best agree on something, considering what's marching straight at us. What about you, Davy? I don't figure Santa Ana's gonna keep marching down into Tennessee. Oh, let him try that. Oh, well, Jim, it's a shame you missed all my oratory out there. I was inspired. Well, I do go on and on sometimes, but you know, every now and then, when I'm right in the middle of speechifying, I can hear myself saying something that makes a whole lot of sense. Now, for instance, I was talking about George Washington and how he got the country going and all that. And without meaning to get allegorical or anything like that, it come to me that what I was talking about is right here, now. Government, people's rights. Now, you got 40,000 Americans down here. They was invited down by Mexico, wasn't they? All right, help tame the place, give them citizens' rights. Then this Santa Ana comes along, and he's going to take their rights away from them. That's wrong. I'll fight that right down the ground. I mean, even if, even if the only land I wound up with was six feet of dirt, they throw on top of me. Might be all we wind up with, Davy. What is it, Mina? It is your men, Senor Bowie. They are fighting with Colonel Travis's men again. Oh, damn, you know these boys keep this up. They're not going to have any fight left in them. Damn boys are drunk. Yes, sir. There will be no more fighting. The next men found fighting will be put in the stockade. Clean yourself up, Sergeant. Yes, sir. I'd appreciate a little help in controlling your men. We are supposed to be a military unit. Jim. Oh. Oh. Don't you think you ought to save that for Santana, amigo? I don't know. I swear. 
If we didn't hold rank, I think it beat the tar out of the kid. I still might. Davy Crockett, once again. Welcome to San Antonio, Senor Crockett. Pleasure to be here, sir. I hope you mean that, senor. Oh, as long as you keep throwing these wingdings. Juan here can talk a mare out of her fold. He's uh, kind of the Mexican Davy Crockett. In fact. I'm hoping he can work some of that magic on our neighbors to the east here. Bring them to our side. Thousands of posts, Santana. I don't think I will need much magic. Well, maybe not. What would General Cause turn a tail, huh? All right, cool. Now. I think he's going to give another speech. I think I'm going to miss it. Well, that'll be a shame. I'll be back as soon as I can, with as many men as I can. In the meantime, find your temper, Jim Bowie. Don't know what you're talking about. Naturally. Sir. Right. In your pocket. Man, Yeah, good man. Major, I want a battle alert. What? Now, Major. Yes, sir. Come on. Agreed? Agreed. <laughs> After rendezvousing with General Sesma and General Cos, we will secure San Antonio de Bejar. With 4,000 men, these rebels will beg to pay my taxes. <laughs> Excellency. According to Colonel Cost's report, San Antonio may prove to be... No. Third. I will not go around. It is a question of honor. My brother-in-law was a coward, retreating from his post, leading a thousand brave men into this grace. I will not allow any man to stain the honor of this army or that of any soldier. Of course, Excellency. Ah! Dulce Rojo, the Mexican soldier will march into hell if you keep his belly filled with sweet bread. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Black. <laughs> Soon we will dine in San Antonio. Pardons, Lieutenant. What is it? You're one in the plaza, sir. Oh, well, you can tell Mr. Crocker that maybe he can wrestle bears all day and drink all night, but we lesser men need our Pardon sleep. me, sir, but it's Colonel Travis. Colonel Bowie is with him. All right, two minutes. Yes, sir. Bowie and Travis are together. It might mean good news. If it isn't? Then I'll listen to Bowie. A married Mexican? He lived Mexican. Yeah, he'll know. Well, now that Travis ain't a good man, he is. Where are my boots? Right here. Susanna, all the same, I still think it'd be best if you got out of here. Now, with Fannin's men here, the place is going to be a madhouse, and it's no place for a woman and child. I mean, you know how I feel about that. Pay mind to me on this, please. Now, my work will be a whole lot simpler knowing that you're not underfoot with all these soldiers around. It may be the best army in Texas, but that don't guarantee they got fit and manners. Really, Almiron, you act like I've been in some fancy parlor for the past eight months. I've been right beside you the whole time. It's gonna be a different place now. My mind's made up about this, Susanna. Come back before the swell eyes come to collect you. Cross the Rio Grande. Oh, 
What about Fannin and your boys from Goliath? And Sam Houston, what about him? Both Fannin and Houston are on the march to come to our aid. When did they get here, Jim? As of this moment. How about it, Jim? As of this moment, we are on a battle alert. Is that your word on it, Jim? Boys, listen to me. I only got one thing to say, and this is it. Now, if Fannin and Houston want to take any part in this, they better get here quick. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Santa Ana's plans for conquest are going to end right here. This Texan doesn't lay down and play dead, and this Texan fights for his freedom. I'm willing to bet that every last God-fearing man amongst you don't feel any different than I do. This is for Texas, boys. This is for Texas and freedom. you on your daddy's wagon leaving town? Because, oh, Danny, I spoke with my papa and asked him if you could come with us, and he said you could. What? Why did you... I want, want you to come with us, Danny. I don't want you to stay here. Oh, Lucia, you had no call to ask your pa that. You know I can't leave. Why not? This is my village. Why do you have to stay? Because I'm a soldier. Because this is going to be our home. My pa, he didn't leave Kentucky when things got tough. That's different. You had no call. Santa Ana is slaughtering people, Danny. The village of Zacatecas doesn't even exist anymore. It was a peasant village. It's nothing like San Antonio. It doesn't matter. Tell me, how are you going to marry me, Daniel Cloud, if you're dead? Huh? Tell me that. You see, we're an army. Well, we just sent General Cause and his men out of here running for their lives, and we're going to do the same to Santa Ana. Nothing is going to happen to me. Oh, my brother's right. You are pig-headed. I want Texas to be our home. If I stay here and I do this, I'll feel like, I'll feel like I have a right to it. Then I'm staying too. Caramba. Is this what every decision is going to be like? about that salute, huh? Oh, the habit, I'm afraid, the deafness of the common soldier. Well, is that how you survived going to Russia with Napoleon Louis? You deferred everybody? The professional soldier must survive in order to receive his pay, nest pas? Yes, I suppose so. I never was too good at it myself. If I was, I'd still be in the U.S. Congress. I got a second chance out here in Texas, so political office. I would vote for you, sir. Well, yeah. Plan on staying after the fighting then, huh? Well, I am here for the land, Colonel. Where I come from, the land is riches, and money is rights, and there's not much of either of those to go around, and not for a man like me. I expect you're going to find your satisfaction then, soldier. Yeah. Thank you. Stand out. Ain't much of a fort, is it? Well, that's all it's been since the Spanish gave it up in 93. You think you're going to have any siege equipment? Too difficult to move this time of year. The way I see it is our weakest position is that 50-yard stretch of picket fence between the chapel and the stone wall. Mm. What 
like to have some earthworks. Jameson's working on it. And I ordered Lieutenant Dickinson to place our 18-pounder by that picket fence and four of our eight-pounders there and over there. Uh -huh. We are going to hole up, then. I don't see any alternative, do you? Well, we could show them some Indian fighting, get out there and whittle them down some before they get here. We take a small group, fire and run, harass Holy Moses out of them. Wouldn't be no trouble for me and the boys. We did come here to fight. I don't think I could risk that with just 152 men. The way I see it, our job is to delay Santa Ana as long as possible, make it as costly for him as we can. I'm telling you this, Colonel, because technically you and your men are not under my command. It seems everywhere I go, somebody's inviting me to leave. I'm merely pointing out that... Point is, Colonel, you and Jim Bowie got a lot more in common than you know because he gave me the same speech. Now, don't you worry about that 50-foot of picket fence. Me and the Tennessee boys will hold that for you. We don't cut much to walls. Listen. Danny Cloud. <laughs> They were there, I swear it. Uh, thousands of them. I saw the lances and pinions. I don't see anything but bushes and sand. I tell you, they were out there. How old are you, son? 21, sir. I mean, I'll be 21 in 13 days, sir. Oh. Colonel, I saw what I saw. I believe you, son. Hey, where are you going? Where do you think? Are you a commander or a scout? You know something, Colonel? You're getting to be a burr under my saddle. Well, that's fine. We'll both risk our lives, then. How's that? It's ridiculous is what it is. Your position's here. That's right. Same as yours, Colonel. Dr. Sutherland. Yes, sir. All right. Go ahead, Doc. Can I take Smith with me, sir? Yeah, be quick about it. I want to know what's out there, if anything's out there. Yes, sir. If it makes any difference to you, I want to go just as bad as you do. Anything, Colonel? Nothing yet. How are we coming along with the cannons? Are we ready, sir? Uh, sir, I was kind of wondering. Well, if you don't mind, I kind of like to go into San Antonio. Go ahead, Lieutenant, and take my horse and give Mrs. Dickinson my regards. Yes, sir. Thank you, I will. My Rosa Maria, she's been seeing him in her dreams for a month. Who? Santa Ana. Don't you think it's kind of suspicious, Colorado, how she's always dreaming about some other man? Don't bother me as long as it's me she's in bed with. Holy sweet Jiminy. There ain't that many people in all of Texas. Let's go. You gotta tell boy, I'll go to the Alamo. As far as the eye could see, Cloudboy was right. We're gonna need some help.
chairman ain't nothing like I ever seen before. Speak up, man. He's here. Santa Ana's here. Let's go. Don't you understand? No, listen to me, Elmron. I've got something to say, and you better quiet down and hear me out. I did not bring our child 1,000 miles to see us separated. So? And I believe the Lord wanted us to start a new life. He brought us all the way out here to Texas to do it. You can't say I haven't been a good wife. I have, coming all the way out here across the country like this. And you can't say I've ever been one to argue with the Lord or my husband, but Elmy, I am staying. Beside you is my place, and that's where I'll be. And you got a lot to learn, Lieutenant, if you think I got married to you for any other reason than to be with you. When did you decide this? About two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? Well, you might have told me. Can I stay? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I would have tore me up to watch you leave anyway. I'll come back tonight and move us into the Alamo. Fight too. No, you will not fight. But I'm almost 13. I am old enough. The people you want to fight are our own people. Is it them you'd like to kill? But they march for Santa Ana. It is the dictator we fight, not our own. You will stay with the children and your mother. It is my promise to her. Come on. Speak. Thy general, our latest intelligence suggests that the garrison has not been reinforced. Suggests? With conviction, general. Down. There are no more rebels left in the village? None. Our scouts were precise on that matter, Excellency. Quite. Our new scouts prefer to retain their tongues. History teaches us, gentlemen, that great generals remain generals by never underestimating their opposition. So you will understand that I will not move against the rebels until I know exactly, precisely, within a man, the size and disposition of the forces of General Sam Houston and Colonel James Fannin, and I will sacrifice as many scouts as I feel is necessary to possess that information. Am I understood? Yes, Excellency. <laughs> I like you, English. Your uh, thoroughness, your uh, worldliness. On behalf of my countrymen. But I do not like your fine manners. Manners win women, not wars. Perhaps if you English had realized that, the Americanos would not be a country to plague me now. Yes? Yes. Major! You have prepared my carriage? Yes, my general. 
It might do you well to remember, gentlemen, you serve under a commander who has never known defeat. You'll probably find Fanon and Root, John. You give him this and bring it back here as quick as you can. Yes, sir. Are you sure about this? Not much help to hear, am I, Colonel? I can ride. This is for Ponton and Gonzalez, directing him to rally those settlers to our aid. We'll get it done. I know you will, John. I'll get the horses. Man sure is full of himself. Anybody calls himself El Supremo hasn't got much of a choice. What kind of guns are those that they're using? Well, believe it or not, those are discards from the Battle of Waterloo, courtesy of that Englishman, uh, Colonel Black. They're no good past 70 yards and a kick like a mule, but uh, Santa Ana likes a bargain. Well, that's a piece of luck for us, eh? Maybe. Sir. Lieutenant Dickerson would like to move the southwest cannons flush to the south wall before sundown, sir. He'd like to see you as soon as he can. I'll be right there. Yes, sir. Well, I don't think there's any hurry moving those cannons right now. There's more important things the men ought to be doing. You know, I cannot for the life of me figure out why Houston left you and I here in co-command, but surely you must remember that he sent me here to finish your job. You were supposed to destroy this mission and defy the direct order. I find it difficult to take advice from a man so ignorant of military procedure. I'm gonna tell you something, tin soldier. You're the one that said it would be impossible for Santa Ana to make a winter march into San Antonio. Well, take a look over there. I'd say the outnumber is 20 to 1, wouldn't you? I'll tell you, you got nothing to worry about, though. Santa Ana's a man of great patience. You're gonna have plenty of chance to play commander. Right up until he decides to come over this wall. Judicious expedition. What the devil does Fannin mean by that? It means he's going to proceed judiciously. He hasn't enough horses broken for wagon work, and he feels convinced that travel by oxen is going to subject him to harassment by enemy forces. At Goliath. What enemy forces? Well, he believes General Sesma's in the area. Sesma's between us and the Rio Grande. How's he supposed to harass Fannin from there? Oh, he must be having trouble communicating with his scouts. Either that or he's a coward. Well, before we start impugning the man's character, Fannin's in a touchy situation. He's got the only real army in Texas. He's got to be cautious. There's more. But well, with Austin out of the country and Sam Houston God knows where, Fannin believes that he is commander-in-chief. 
Who's going to dispute that? Then in command in chief, Lord, help us. Well, who needs him anyhow? We do. That's who. Three days. Bannon said he'll be here in three days. We'll just have to hold out, that's all. That's right, we hold out. All right, it's settled. No, it's not. I want Major Bonham here to go off and find Sam Houston for us. My place is here, Bill. You'll be here, Jim, but I want our Commander-in-Chief apprised of our situation here, even if he is against it. Well, he'll be against it, all right. What the dickens is that? I was told, Excellency, this was the home of your friend Jim Blewett. During my visits to this part of our country, this home was always an oasis, an island in a province of desolation. I wish never to hear his name again. As you wish, Excellency. The life of a soldier, my dear nephew, as I'm sure you're learning, can be very tedious. Very tedious. The days, the nights. Her name is Selena Muski Sanko. She's the Alcalde's daughter. You're a good nephew, Ricardo. Make the arrangements. Excellency, it's a matter of some, some delicacy. Her father, being the alcalde, is a local official. And You've proven yourself capable in these matters before, Colonel. Thank you, Excellency. But if you allow me to... Colonel? Me? Thank you, Excellency. This is folly. Going to the aid of a military position that by all rights should have been destroyed, facing forces greater than my own, and not one, but two of my superiors gone and got themselves lost somewhere. But you are going, aren't you, sir? I have no choice. Good. Where are you going? To Gonzales to raise volunteers. Well, they won't have a chance. When you get there, they will. Utter folly. Get any word at all from Austin or General Houston, you get it out to me on the double. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Sir, I'd say the 18-pounder might do it. Yeah. Lieutenant, I would love to give Santa Ana a proper Texas L.O. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, boys, this is where we show the colonel we know what we're doing. Zanko? Aye, aye, Captain. Trend and ready. Elevation. Right on target, sir. It's a little unscientific, sir, but without a practice shot. Don't worry, Captain. She won't let you down. I sure hope you're right. Fire at will, Private. Good man's gotta have. 
have some Tennessee blood in him, get off a shot like that. Not a bad way to say hello, don't you agree? I agree. Colonel Travis? Ought to remind Mr. Santa Ana that we Americans are used to living under a constitution. We don't take lightly to people breaking their word. Indeed. We use charcoal and lamp oil. Well, my compliments to you and the other ladies. Well, you fly it, Colonel? Well, it'd be my privilege, Mr. Dickinson, my privilege and my honor. Well, thank you. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, Ms. Mrs. Dickinson, ma'am, we're going to be running low on rifle shot before long, and I was wondering if you and the other ladies might uh, oblige us, gathering and melting and so forth. We could cook on rocks. We could melt down our pots and pans. That'd be fine. I bet I could even make a flu somehow. Uh, I had an uncle who was a blacksmith, and I learned just about everything that he knew. Well, thank you, Colonel. Taylor! Yes, sir. yes, sir. Let's give Santa Ana a history lesson, Taylor. Run that up. Yes, yes sir. sir. these rebels fight under. Am I supposed to understand that? The great invitation. Free land and the Mexican Constitution of 1824 lured 40,000 Americans to Texas. Former Constitution. <laughs> you English should talk. Your own king sent troops against these people and they made a mockery of him in front of the world. Who are you to talk about Mexico? I have sworn an oath to defend her. The pledge of my presidency. Not one inch of soil will be ruled by rebels or foreign interlopers. Mexico, finally, for the Mexicans! Who are you to speak for my people? Enforcements, Colonel. I'll make it about a hundred. Maybe it's Fannin scouts, Colonel. You'd send scouts out ahead, wouldn't you? Yeah, but that doesn't mean Fannin would. Right, like an Indian. That's the game. Man, the gates! Last Christmas I spent with you in Ursula. Remember? It was your father-in-law that said that neither one of us could ride to Nacaroches and be back in time to break the piñata. That's right. And we did! Yes. Did it in six days, as I recall. You know, I remember that because it was Ursula's last Christmas. I miss her, too. That sickness took a lot of good people. Yeah. Leaves a damned old war horse like me. That doesn't make any sense. Jim, I would rather stay with my men. You know, it has been three days now. Santana is likely to attack at any moment. I don't think so. I think he's going to wait and pick up his cowardly brother-in-law and then try to save the family honor. Besides Juan, we need men. Who else are your people going to follow? We'll follow Jim Bowie. I'm afraid there may be a few here that uh, regret that before this is over. You know, if we don't see each other again. Juanito, you go and do what you have to. 
When you're done, you get your Mexican carcass back here, you understand? Hey, Candias, amigo. Adios, hermano. Anybody can once again, Chad. Look at him go. A Comanche can't ride no better than that. And have a blood flag prepared. When the time comes, I will want to carry it with me through Texas. See to it. It'll be taken care of. You have attended to that other matter? Yes, it's arranged. Not by you personally, I hope. No, I sent Captain Morales to speak to her parents, and as always, they were overwhelmed to think that they're yes, gonna... Yes, 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 I know. We will do it tomorrow. As you wish, Uncle. Splendid. And Ricardo? Yes? Again, you called me Uncle before the officers and the men. Your general punishes you. Your uncle loves you. Remain a loyal nephew. Be a better soldier. Yes, Excellency. critical on rifle shot. Yeah, I know. I don't figure we'll need the uh, metal strapping on the wagon wheels anymore. That's a good idea. I'll tell Mrs. Dickinson. Right. The campfire's just about encircled us by now. You still think they're gonna wait to attack us? I do. Took him three days to surround this place. I don't think he's in any damn hurry now. <coughs> Doesn't sound like no drinking cough. Does it matter? It doesn't matter to me. Save it, Travis. I don't need another doctor. It's not your health I'm concerned about. Glad to hear it. You can drink yourself to death as far as I'm concerned, but maybe your family might. My family's gone, Travis. They're not here anymore. That's why uh, there's a difference between you and me. You got that young lady waiting for you in Galveston, waiting to marry you, isn't she? And that little boy, you come out of this alive, you can start a whole new life. Maybe even uh, grab a little glory on the way. What are you fighting for? More like the old life, I guess. Like it used to be. Like it is in America, where the people own the government. See, Santa Ana, he thinks he owns the people. I don't like being owned. I'm uh, kind of particular about that kind of thing. So am I. You say you lost everybody on your wife's side of the family? Well, got a second cousin. Haven't seen him in about four years. Where's he at? Right over there in town. His name is General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana. Yes, sir. There was 10,000 of them. All a hollering and dancing around screeching enough to make your blood run cold. Fur as the eye could see, there was nothing but tomahawks and spears a-shaking and brandishing. War paint spread all over them devils. It was a horrifying sight, I'm here to tell you. Now, I know you Texans have got your Comanches and Kiowas and them Apaches, and they are fierce, I'll grant you that, but they ain't nothing compared to your ordinary run-of-the-mill Crick Indian. Now, them people are mean. They don't have to work on it none. They're born mean. It's in their blood. Why, your young buck ain't even considered a man till he's killed and scalped a dozen people, preferably white. Oh, yeah. that ain't all. The squaws, 
Now, them squaws are just as mean as the men, and they're twice as ornery. Why, if they... Well, you'll have to imagine what I'm alluding to with ladies present. But <laughs> well, I can tell you this. You don't never let them take you alive. Yes, sir. Now then. Where was I? Ah, oh, yeah. Over here on our side, we got old Andy Jackson and me and the Tennessee boys. In them days, old Hickory was just a tree instead of a switch. That's back when we was friendly. Yeah. Well, so what happened next, Davy? Well, sir, we looked out at that sea of savages, and old Andy and me both knew we was going to have to be plenty smart that day if we was going to come out of there with our hair still on our heads. Formidable a foe as your average Crick Indian is. So whilst we was pondering it, it come to me like a bolt of lightning, and I knew just what to do. Line up here, boys, I hollered. Line up and shoot bow and arrows at her. <laughs> <laughs> bow and arrows is what I said. I wish you'd been there to see it. Confounded the dickens out of them, didn't know what to do. Naturally, they was assuming they was the only Indians in the neighborhood. <laughs> hoo-ha, hoo-ha, they was a-dancing around like that. Why, they got so head up, they plumb charged us. <laughs> so? Well, sir, then we put down them bow and arrows, and we picked up our long rifles. Fired, Will, boys, I hollered, and they done it. Well, not a pretty sight, folks. Decimation. Bodies stacked up there like cordwood. Excuse me, ladies. And I'll tell you this, to this day, there ain't a single Crick Indian left in all of Florida. Not a one. Now, in the Black Hawk War, Dearly beloved. All right, all you ladies, back to the barracks, please. Colonel Boa, how can they... That's an order, Mrs. Dickinson. Do you, Antonio de Padua, Lopez de Santana, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? Dog couldn't use those shacks. I'm going with you. Colonel Crockett, well, Colonel Bowie and I are away from our post. Did you keep an eye on the place? Glad to. Are you coming? Get your on. First intelligent thing I've seen the two of you do.
I pronounced you man and wife. Now you may kiss the bride. You were attacked by two men? Two rebels with torches, yes, Excellency. My they officers retreat from two men with torches? Excellency. <laughs> what will you do when you have to face gunfire? Excellency. Lead my army into shame? <laughs> if you ever humiliate me in front of this town again, I will have your head on a lance. Excellency, I take great exception. Do you understand? If I were you, I should say yes. Yes, Excellency. Now, do you think I can trust you not to lose my army while I devote a few moments to my bride? This is my wedding day. Driver. Go, man. They closed the pod, Sarge. We're surrounded now. Of course, it took them all five days to do it. Ain't the snappiest army in history, I'd say. Hey, it just means it makes our job a little easier. See, all their ranks are a little more thin now. How about Fannin and Houston? How are they going to get through? I don't figure nobody can stop them. Sarge? Sarge, you OK? I think I'm gonna faint. Sorry. I'd say about 200 yards. More or less. You still can't do much with them muskets at that range. Even Doug, it. Of course, the cannonball is a different matter. I'd give anything to find out how Major Bonham's doing right now. Oh, thank you for your help, Captain. You're welcome, sir. Begging your pardon, General, can I ask you a question? Of course, go ahead. Those Cherokee, they don't really call you big drunk, do they? <coughs> I'm afraid so, yes. Matter of fact, when I was living with them, they gave me two or three different names. Of course, that one was the most objectionable. Yeah, well, if you ask me, it just don't seem fitting. You sort of being a chief yourself, General. I'll confess something to you. If the Cherokee don't join up with Santa Ana, I have every intention of living up to that name in celebration. You've had a little enough to celebrate, don't you think? Sure wouldn't want those delegates at the convention we're going to to hear it. Be like throwing a rattler into a hen house. <laughs> of course, that's... Only if you want my opinion, sir. Well, I won't tell if you don't. Rider coming! General Houston. Son, you're going to get yourself shot. You go charging around like that. I've been looking for you for three days, sir. Well, you found me. It's the Alamo, sir. They're under attack. General, did you hear me? Yes, I heard you. Well, we have to do something. Mobilize your army. It's Major Bonham, isn't it? General, we have in time. It may have already fallen. Major, I don't have an army to mobilize. What I have is a ragtag army and a bunch of bickering politicians who can't agree on how to make a government. What I need is money and men from the United States. But these are loyal Texans who believe that you are coming to help them. I never made that promise, never. I never believed that San Antonio was the gateway to Texas. This broken down mission in the middle of no place? No, I served Texas better as a constitution maker, not as the savior of unruly and insubordinate officers. Their blood will buy you time. 
You don't mind that, do you? Those men that you are willing to let die are my friends. Then if I were you, Major, I would wish to be with them. You are a coward, General. I rather wish I were you, Major. What I mean is, where are the ones that made it work here? Not the Mexicans, not the French. Even the Indians don't care for this part of Texas much. Now, Mexico invited us down here, and we made the land work. We succeed now. The land will reward us. We can hold our heads high. What if we fail? Well, death and the cause of liberty does not make me shudder, Colonel. You wouldn't have any political ambition, would you, son? Me? <laughs> no. Glad to hear it. Now I come to ranch. That's a grand idea. Yeah. You gonna give me some of that prairie cattle? You got a piece of land all picked out. With Lucia, I bet. <laughs> yes, sir, you bet. And as your age, all I wanted to do was find some adventure. Like my daddy had in the American Revolution with George Washington. What about you, Colonel? I was in school, studying the law. My wife pregnant. They ain't pelting us with apples or serenading us with music. Musicians alone could outnumber us. Hmm. Coming in here full of vinegar, I'm not in the mood. I want to know why you're not marching for the Alamo. You care for a drink, Major? No? Suit yourself. Colonel, I want to know. Fine. You want an explanation? Maybe broken down wagons would be of interest to you. Or run off oxen. Or my own sense of responsibility to a command that as of this moment is the only army in Texas. Now, would that be a good start for you, Major? Start of a damn catastrophe? Take a good look at my shoulder. You see that eagle? That eagle means that I don't have to explain anything to you, not one damn thing. No, sir. You don't. Good Lord, spare him. I don't want him out there where every man can see him, Doc, so put him in the chapel. All right. You let me know as soon as he wakes up. Doc, I don't want him to suffer. Davey, I wouldn't swap places with that man for all the gold in Texas. Oh, I guess he'd swap places with anybody today.
I heard. Is he gonna be all right? He's unconscious. You gonna be all right? We need Bowie. I need Bowie. I was growing up, my mama used to say, child, every man is born to a destiny. Some good, some bad, some know God, and some know the devil. Some of us, most of us, I expect, are somewhere in the middle. But the thing is, she say, we can never know what that destiny is until it's upon us. You know, the last time I thought on that was the night before I was to hang. I thought, thank the Lord my mama's dead. Because I sure wouldn't want to see my destiny was swinging at the end of some rope somewhere. Nah, sir. But I didn't hang that next day because a white man believed in justice enough to save a black man from hanging. I figured I'd know my destiny ever since. But to follow that man. Give me cause every day to thank our Lord. I figured about now, Colonel, you ought to know your destiny. The Lord needs a good man to lead these boys to glory. Lead them out of here. He's a man who makes no mistake about what this is all about. There's only one man I know like that. It's a powerful lot to be proud of in your destiny powerful lot. He knew, he knew that he was going to die. With his family gone, he has nothing to live for. He has Texas. Colonel, Ryder, sir. I'll be back. Sergeant, I thought you were injured. No, sir, Colonel, sir. My hand's the least vulnerable part of my body. Reinforcements? Yes, indeed. They're leaving the Dust Club besides Kentucky. Yeah, thank God for that. Thank them for me, too. Mexican, all right. Heavily supported column. General Koss has chosen the longest possible route to obey my orders. He's still a two days march away from us. Perhaps it is due to the lack of water. Lack of water? Ha! The man's a coward. Lack of water didn't stop General Sesma and his men, and he had a longer distance to cover. My God. No wonder these rebels sent him racing home like a little puppy. <laughs> I would have given anything to see Bowie's face as he watched Sesma march in with his men. Excellency, we are all in accord. 
what, with the addition of General Sesma's men, the attack on the Alamo should take place now. Is there news of Houston? No, Excellency. It would seem that he is invisible. Then, until he is visible, I will stand by my decision. We will not attack until General Koss gets here. Excellency, your sister, Senora Koss, is here to see you. Here now? Yes, Excellency. Of course. Bring her in. That will be all, gentlemen. He's making every effort to get here. So he sends his wife to plead his case. No, Excellency. I come to see my brother. You haven't kissed me yet. Yes. I've missed you, sister. And I, you, Tonya. He's a coward. He brings shame to our family, to your children. He's my husband. He's not worthy of you. Antonio, you're a great man. You bring honor to our family, to your children. You are beloved by our people. That is your destiny. My husband will never be the great man you are, Antonio. But I love him. And in this hour of need, I will do my duty by him, just as you will do yours for our country. You are a lesson to us all. How long have I been here? Two days. We're going on our seventh night. Not that long. How's the man, Travis? Even better. I'm sending out personal notes along with this. I was wondering if you wanted to dictate something. No, I expect to be seeing the ones I love soon enough. Everyone else is within these walls. Can I get you anything? Don't be worrying on me, Travis. You got enough to think about. Read it. <clears throat> to the people of Texas and all Americans in the world, fellow citizens and compatriots, I am besieged by a thousand or more of the Mexicans of Santa Ana. I have sustained a continual bombardment and cannonade for 24 hours. The enemy is demanded to surrender at discretion, otherwise the garrison are to be put to the sword if the fort is taken. I've answered the demand with cannon shot, and our flag still waves proudly from the walls. I shall never surrender or retreat. I call on you in the name of liberty, of patriotism, and everything dear to the American character to come to our aid with all dispatch. The enemy is receiving reinforcements daily and will no doubt increase to three or four thousand in four or five days. If this call is neglected, I am determined to sustain myself as long as possible and die like a soldier who never forgets what is due to his own honor 
a man of his country. Victory or death. Travis. You're no tin soldier. Well, maybe on account of us, my boy won't have to do this. I figure that's worth something. Don't you? Evening, Colonel. Evening, Major. We had a wonderful night here, don't we? Certainly is. Yeah, nothing like an evening walk in the desert. Mm -hmm. Shame we can't just stroll beyond the walls, ain't it? Dirty shame, ain't it? Yep, there's nothing like it. Mm -hmm. Well, I have my rounds. Always a pleasure conversing with you, sir. Keep your heads low. Yes, sir. Where are you going? Go back to the barracks. You shouldn't be out here. Do it, Danny. Please don't. You'll be killed. I know Lucia, it. Lucia, go back to the barracks. Now. Danny. Why is it quiet? Excellency, our artillery has been attacked. Why is it you didn't inform me? Of all the men under my command, you're the one I expect not to let me down. But, Excellency, I am the one on the attack here. Me, not those traitors. I outnumber my enemy by 20 to 1, and I can't even protect my own ordnance. Where are they? In the study, Excellency.
the artillery. Why can't I hear the artillery? No one? Es el Al monte! Excellency. Raiders from the mission disrupted our bombardment last night. Mm. Hmm. But, of course, they were driven off and repairs are on the way. I see. It's interesting, don't you think, that 150 men are so underwhelmed by our overwhelming forces that they send raiding parties against us? Do you think it's possible that they know something about this army that I do not? Hmm? I represent the will of the people of Mexico to put down a rebellion. I have never failed in my duty, and I will not do so now. From now on, my patience, my goodwill, you may no longer rely on. From now on, more than your payment in gold weighs in the balance, much more. We will go home with honor, or we will not go home. Understood? Am I understood? Yes, Excellency. I will hear the cannon fire resume within 15 minutes. Thank you. He's mad. That's what he is. We, gentlemen, are commanded by a madman. No, he don't neither. Well, it's the gospel truth. That's plain heathen. I never heard of no such thing. And when he gets tired of his new bride, he don't ship her off back to her parents. No, that'd spoil the whole thing. He sends her off to Mexico City to his wife. So the real Mrs. Santa Ana... The real Mrs. Santa Ana? Gets the new Mrs. Santa Ana. Right. Well, there must be some hellacious words exchanged over that. I'll wager there are. So what does she do with them all? Yeah. Only thing she can. She packs them all off to a monastery. And I'll bet there's a whole new order of nuns down there in Mexico City, and every one of them is an ex-Mrs. Santa Ana. No, they ain't, and I'll tell you why. Women ain't allowed in monasteries. None at all. Now, you want a true story? I'll tell you a true story. It was these two fellas that was business associates, and one of them was uh, a bit of a scamp, and he had some partners who were very unsavory, and they got it into their heads one day that they might not be getting their fair share of the profits, you see. So they decided they was going to kidnap him and take him out in the woods and just chop his hands off. Oh, I forgot to mention that fellow's a pirate, the first fellow. Now, the other fellow, the one that ain't a pirate, he gets wind of this, say, and he figures he's just going to jump right in there and help out his friend because the pirate had saved his life at one time. Well, sir, 
Life's too short to be cautious, to see. And off he goes to the rescue, just a ripping and a tear. In the meantime, of course, them pirates, there's no flies on them, and they're moving with alacrity, and they just went out there and gathered him up, too. Now, they're just fixing to chop the hands off of both of them when one of these rascals gets an idea. What do you say, he says, we have us a duel, and we'll get our meanest, horniest, gougingest, romping, stomping, rough and tumble fighter, and we'll put him in a room with him, and they'll go at it to the death. Whoever's alive gets to win. All right, they say, off they go. Now, it's pitch black in this room, and there's nothing coming out of there except sounds of mortal combat. I mean, screeches and moans and grunts and thuds and whacks. So finally, the door flies open. The winner steps out. It's our fellow. Now, that was down in the Louisiana Bayous, June 23rd, 1826, and the one that was a pirate was Gene Lafitte. The other fella, the one with all the guts, man I always wanted to meet, Jim Bowie. Finally got to meet him. He can still fight some. <laughs> Battalion of the Cazadores. What? Cazadores is my hometown where my family is from. I saw their flag. You still have family there? My brother. Riders coming in! There are definitely not men, sir. Give him cover! Is it Bannon, sir? Oh, no. It's Colorado Smith! Come on! All I know is when I was there, he said he was leaving. I seen them all mounted up and getting ready to ride out. Then in Gonzales, I ran into Doc Sutherland and Lieutenant Kimball here. Sir, Gonzales Ranging Company of Mounted Volunteers. That is. He told me Fannin isn't coming after all. That's a fact, sir. I got a brother at Fort Defiance. And that was two days ago while Juan Sakin was apprising these boys of our conditions here. And you came anyway? Yes, sir. Sakin's going on to Lavaca to see if he can't roust up some more volunteers for us. And what about Major Bond? If you see him, I sent him off to find Fannin also. We heard something, but it, it didn't make much sense. What was that? Yes, sir, an Apache scout informed us that a white man was seen headed into Cherokee territory. Huh? The description sounded like Bonham. You know the Apache, sir, eyes like a fox. Cherokee territory is two days' ride from here. Mm, possible, I guess. Maybe Houston's meeting with the Indians to try to keep them out of this thing. Well, that may be, sir. Houston's not at the convention, and our new governor's mad as a dickens about it. Says he's gonna drop him as a delegate if he don't show up soon. What convention? Of the provisional government, sir. You didn't know? Well, Lieutenant, you're our first acknowledgement from the outside world. It could be Snowden and Galveston. We wouldn't be aware of it. Well, sir, Governor Smith has called a convention at Washington on the Brazos, and he's sworn not to let any member go until Texas has a constitution. Texas is declaring its independence, sir. Why, there's even talk we may become part of the United States of America. Well, I'll be... Kimball said that we were the reason the convention was called. You know what this means? It means that Santa Ana's an invader. Means that flag out there is the flag of independence. They'll have to send us reinforcements now. What are they shooting out there, George? Looks like they're shooting at each other. It's bottom! Come on, firemen! Man the gate! Jimmy! That is a $2 hat. You recall the first time we did this? We were 12. Back at Jedediah Peckle's barn, down from your daddy's spread. I believe you had the first drink then, too. 
But I believe you finished the bottle. I don't recall that. Well, you wouldn't. I carried you home. <laughs> now we remember. My daddy polished my butt like never before. Passed his son drinking like that? He wouldn't stand for that, no. No, sir. Not a proper man like the Reverend. We couldn't be further from Carolina, could we, Jim? Not much. Miles and years. Yep. He's not coming, is he, Jimmy? No, Buck, he's not coming. He give you a good reason? He had a reason. I called him a coward. You called Sam Houston a coward? I'm afraid so. <laughs> really? I wish I could have seen that. They'll probably want to court-martial me. They'll probably want to hang you. Probably. You really call Sam Houston a coward? I'm afraid so. How come you could always drink more than me? You ever notice that? It's easy. It always annoyed me. It's your damn conscience. Always gets in the way. Damn nuisance. No argument here, counselor. Well, Jimmy, I'm afraid my conscience has gone and got us killed this time. Looks like it has, Buck. I'm sorry. Some of you men are probably asking yourselves the same questions I'm asking myself. I can't answer them for you. You can't answer them for me. What I do know is this. This is not about land or money. It's about the one thing that no man should ever be able to take from another man the freedom to make his own choices about his life, where he'll live, how he'll live, how he'll raise his family. We face a man who would take those God-given rights away from us. Well, not from me, he's not. There can be no doubt about the price. General Houston will not reinforce us as he is still assembling his army. We can expect no aid from Colonel Fannin as his position is untenable. For the past 11 days, you have done more than any man has the right to ask. I'm honored to be among you.
Those men who wish to stay will cross the line and stand with me. That is may go. My blessing. Damn it, boys. Somebody carry me over, will you? Go with God, mon ami. I suspect God will be staying here with us, Colonel. Gonna miss out on a good ruckus, Louis. Thank you, my friend. I didn't survive Russia and Waterloo to die in this desert. Maybe soldiering is all that I will ever know. I'd wait until dark. Yes, sir. Major Evans. Sir. That special ordinance I gave you, is it still in safekeeping? Yes, sir. How many would you guess there are? Well, I guess there are about 12 bottles, sir, exactly. Exactly. Yes, sir. Well, why don't you break out those 12 bottles, Major Evans? I think the men feel a thirst coming on. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> At your post, though, gentlemen, if you don't mind. <laughs> Lieutenant Gregorio. I wasn't going to make it an order, but I thought you should evacuate your families. It was not so easy, Colonel. Not for my family. Or with Sue, Colonel. Well, I thought if they could all make it to your farm, Gregorio, it would be the smart thing for you to take them. Thank you, Colonel, but I'm a collaborator. I cannot go back. Well, then your family alone. Santa Ana kills the families of collaborators. It's the same with Sue, Colonel. I wish to heaven I'd gotten her out of here when I had the chance, but I can't see sending her out there now. Besides, she wouldn't go. The decision has been made. God has taken it out of your hands. Well, the decision is his, but I bear the responsibility. Vaya con Dios, amigo. Gregorio. I would have been a terrible farmer. getting paid for this. No. It ain't enough. How long you been with Davy? Oh, about two years. Bet you seen a little bit of fighting, huh? Some. Going to see some more.
What do you make of it? Well, things Indians, I'd hazard a guess, but I don't know about Santa Ana. Man's peculiar. I don't understand it. The man's got his reinforcements. Why doesn't he attack? sleeping in this fort right now. Oh, that's a safe bet. Yeah. Well, he wears us down without firing a shot, but see, he forgets one thing. I know him. I know about the voices. What voices? In his head. His ancestors. He thinks they talk to him. See, he thinks he's descended from the sun god. You know when they talk to him loudest? When? Early in the morning. El Magnifico thinks his ancestors talk to him loudest in the morning. That's when he'll attack, boys. <coughs> Have the men rest up. Be ready to go before sunrise. What is it? Ask me to marry you. What? Do you love me? Lucia, you know. And then tell me, right now. I love you. And you were going to ask me. That's true, isn't it? Well, I still am. I'll talk to your pa tomorrow. Then ask me, right now. Will you marry me?
Congratulations. Four o'clock, Colonel. Is there any movement along the west and south wall? Enough to wake up the men. Oh, good, you able to get it? Joe, if we get to go to sleep tonight, do I have to give up my bed again? No, sir. Good. Jim called it right. I thought you might want to come with me. Yes, I would. You know, they used lamb's milk mixed in with the motto when they built this place. Counts for the color. Conceived in milk. Well, that's, that's appropriate. Uh, Christened in blood. Davy, could you bring the women and the children in here and have the boys move me over by the door? Cut their throats.
Check your guns, Lieutenant. You never got the reserves into it. Calvary got in the way. They'll be smarter next time. I'm afraid so. Excellency. The, the Guayo has stopped. The General Cross is dead. Colonel Duke was trampled by his own men. And our troops have a retreat. some fighting like to scare my britches off but nothing like this kind of sits in your middle don't it always want to swallow can't get the sweat off your hands no matter how you rub them you think you're alone boy you do what you think anybody's any braver than you are well we ain't not a one of us older don't mean braver y'all thought on it much about what? Well, all I'd done, I tell you, I one time had to think about dying. Not like this. I've never been real strong on thinking. But the way I see it, about the bravest thing any man can do is decide how he wants to meet his maker. Well, if this is brave, ain't nothing like I figured. I give you a rabble of less than 200 men. And you humiliate me and my army. Then you insult me to my face by trying to explain it. You're nothing more than court jesters, versed in charm. A real soldier. A real soldier! would have taken that position or given his life trying, done it for me. How am I to get conscripts if these rebels are not crushed? Victory or death? Let me make it clearer. My victory or your death. I do not want to see a single man left alive. All I want are flames.
sus comandantes. Rita, es una orden. Mrs. Dickinson. There are no survivors, ma'am. His Excellency has expressed a desire to meet you. You can tell His Excellency that I have no wish. Mrs. Dickinson, if I may be so bold. Accept his invitation. The life of your child and your comrades depend on it. And why should Saint Anna's version of your husband's bravery be the only one heard?
Excellency. You know what I wish to see. I found Colonel Travis and the man Crockett. But I have not yet found Senor Bowie. Then do it. I will dip my fingers in their blood. Mrs. Dickinson, Excellency. Madam. I ask that my daughter and the others be spared. For myself, I would have fought with the men. You're very courageous. Tell the others what you've seen. Tell them what will happen if they stand in my way. Send her to the north with the others. I do not make war on women and children. Just the freedom of your people? Wine. I will drink to my victory. Our general drinks to the victory that will cost him his war. This is not about land or money. It's about the one thing that no man should ever be able to take from another man. The freedom to make his own choices about his life. Where he'll live. How he'll live. How he'll raise his family. We face a man who would take those God-given rights away from us. Well, not from me, he's not. There can be no doubt about the price. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.